He's on the cusp of figuring it out in my mind. Uh, you know, he came out in the first inning. He mostly got hurt with off speed. I think when he throws his sinker and trusts it, uh, he's got a chance. Uh, he's got a real good chance. I mean, he's got life to it. It's got action to it. It gets beaten to the ground for double play balls. Uh, it's just right now his mistakes are middle of the plate right where hitters looking for him. You know, Carlos Gonzalez looking for something soft out over middle or middle down heaters. Uh, he's a heck of a hitter. Uh, you leave a pitch there for him, he's going to hurt it. Kind of the same with Nolan Arenado on the slider that kind of hung. Uh, I think his mistakes are just in the middle of the plate. And it's a young guy, and he's figuring it out. And there's more than enough there. I and mean, he's, he's up to 97 again today. But for me, it's the sink. I, I see that, and I think this guy's got a chance to be special someday. And, you know, we're enduring some of the – Tougher outings right now, but I think on the other side of that is going to be something pretty special. Yeah, you know, honestly, in the first inning, and this sounds kind of almost crazy to say this, but I, I was contemplating intentionally walking him in the first inning. That's not a matchup. Perdomo's down in the zone consistently. That's kind of where he is with his fastball. He hasn't at this stage of his career learned to pitch up when necessary. And, uh, the matchup really favors uh, Cargo in that instance. Now, he, he did step up the next time and got him to ground out with the bases loaded, which was a big pitch from a young guy in that situation. So uh, you see signs, you see good things, but uh, you'd love to see. We're, we're over on the side talking about burying the off speed in the dirt right there, seeing if you can get him to expand the zone. You don't want to mess with him in the strike zone. And he didn't intend to. It was uh, one of his splits that just floated up there and didn't do anything that got hit. So uh, it wasn't necessarily a wrong approach. It was just – not executing the particular pitch. What is his being at the big league level maybe sooner than he would have otherwise been here uh, kind of done for his development? Uh, it, it's hard to say. Uh, there's a resiliency in him, and there's a character in who he is as a person that makes you think that this is going to be good for him in the long run. Now, he's obviously been thrust into a few circumstances that in an ideal world he's learning in double A right now, and uh, he's learning these things not under the bright lights. He's learning them in relative anonymity where people are just writing reports on him on occasion and not analyzing every single pitch he throws. So uh, I, I think the resiliency of character he shows, I think Fernando Rodney and Carlos Villanueva being there for him, I think in the long run it's going to be really good for the kid. Yeah, for me it's unfortunate in one sense that like – he didn't need to be pitching tonight. Uh, it's kind of a function of a bullpen day that at the end of it, hoping Matt Thornton could give us two and probably wasn't best just coming off the DL in that situation, hoping he was like a quick seven or eight pitch inning or nine pitch inning where he could give us two and we could leave Brandon Maurer out of it. Uh, you got to have somebody long for tomorrow. That would be Carlos Villanueva. And, and uh, Maurer's pitched four out of five, and he's been – you know, he's been fighting it, so in an ideal world, he's got a day down today, but this isn't an ideal world, so we had to kind of pitch him. And, uh, you know, I, I think in, in due time, like what I liked, what I saw yesterday is he went after Ryan Rayburn with 98 up. He's got one of the highest spin rate fastballs in the game. Uh, those guys traditionally across the board have success up in the zone. If you look at him, uh, his damage has all been done trying to dot an outside corner away and it leaks back middle or it's middle down. Uh, and it is down in the zone. But when you got the high spin rate, that gives guys opportunity to catch up to it when you're in the bottom of the strike zone. And that kind of goes against a lot of what uh, is preached consistently in baseball in the past. But you have a lot of success up in the zone with that type of pitch. And then, then his off-speed plays off of it. Uh, when he's facing one of the best hitters in that game tonight, they got him. Uh, so... Less than an ideal world where he's pitching on four out of five days and uh, he's out there giving everything he's got. And I still hold no doubt in my mind that he's going to really turn the corner here sometime soon. Uh, I see more aggression in his lower half as he loads up and gets into it. I, I see a guy who's getting more and more confidence in that. In that. Uh, he's getting to his launch position with a touch more aggression and a little less drift. Uh, he's putting himself in a centered position where he can fire more consistently, and that's I think that's what's opened up the pull side for him. Uh, before, as he would kind of slide through his swing, everything had to be hit the other way. And I think if you look at the way the balls have been hit in the last couple days, it's been pull side when it should be pull side, and when it's away, it's hit away. And uh, when a guy's going like that, he's going really good. So I think he's in a real good centered athletic position. And, and it's cleared him up to the inner half. And those balls that he hit yesterday in particular for the single down the line, the double down the line, uh, those are balls that earlier in the year he was having a lot of difficulty clearing and getting to. How much concern do you have about the 
consideration went into uh, taking out the Belmont before that Arenado went back? Uh, you know, if, if I look back at the game, it, it, it's, a, it's a tough game to manage, to be honest, when you're a bullpen day. Somebody has to go further than you think they can go. It's, it's either going to be Perdomo or it's going to be Brad Hand or somebody's got to get pushed a little bit further. So uh, had we flipped that order and gotten past the pitcher or – the inning before when Gray was leading off, uh, we probably would have gone straight to Brad Hand to face Charlie Blackman and to start it all off. But he had the pitcher leading off, and I'll consider it one of my mistakes. I look back at the game as I should have had Hand ready after Gray singled, uh, and I think right there for Blackman is when uh, Brad Hand could have come into the game had I made a better decision in that moment. So uh, somebody has to be pushed. You're kind of trying to figure out which fire you're going to play with at some point in time because you're short and you got a bullpen day. And uh, I chose to try to push Perdomo through that inning. And I think once John Gray had a single right there, I should have been ready to get him out. And I wasn't. I didn't have the bullpen up at that point in time. Yeah, I think he's been healthy pretty much all year. He's, he's had the little forearm thing for a while, but more or less he's been healthy. I, I think there's an ebb and a flow to a baseball season for guys, too, hitters, where they're not as hot as they can be at times. And, and he's battled. He battled through a portion of May. He wasn't horrible by any stretch, but he wasn't his uh, normal electric self. And so uh, I think it is indicative of when he puts himself in a good hitting position, I, I think the sky's the limit for him. And that's kind of uh, what he fought for a good portion of the year. It was, he was kind of fighting himself to some degree. And now he's cleared to the inner half and makes it a lot easier to hit that side of the plate. And that, that that gives him a really good chance to to not just be yeah, a pretty good hitter but a great hitter